I'll tell you something deeply personal. The earth might be a pretty place, especially in springtime. But sometimes, when I see it from a different temporal perspective, God, it makes me dizzy. I mean, really, really dizzy. Now, science is great for revealing the world like this from these different perspectives. For instance, do you know how big the earth actually is? So the gentleman physicist suggested this really cool idea of let's measure it. So what sort of size tape measure do you think you would need to measure the size of the earth? Well, it turns out I'm going to be doing my part to measure it using this piece of paper tape and this vertical metal rod. but I can't do it alone. Gonna need your help on this. Look, let's be real. Over 2000 years ago, a guy worked out how big the earth was and surely we can at least do as well as he did. So if you're interested in being part of this global experiment to work out how big the rock which you've spent your entire life on is, then I'll pass you over to the video contest winner, the gentleman physicist. Hello YouTube. This week, we're coming up on the anniversary of a really cool experiment, and I'm hoping you guys can all help me celebrate it. So, if I asked you how long you think we've known what the radius of the Earth is, what would your guess be? Do you think we had to wait for Magellan's expedition to complete their circumnavigation of the planet in 1522? Or maybe the Vikings managed to figure it out when they were paddling around the Atlantic Ocean in their tiny boats? In reality, we've actually had a pretty good estimate of the Earth's radius since 240 BCE. The measurement in question was done by a Greek man by the name of Eratosthenes, and I'm hoping that you can all help me reproduce his calculation this June 22nd, 2013. So, how did he do it? Well, being a librarian at the Library of Alexandria certainly helped. It gave him access to manuscripts and books from all around the world. In one of these, he read an account of a very deep well in the city of Sienne. Apparently, if you look down this well on the summer solstice at noon, you could see your shadow at the bottom. That means that in the city of Sienne, at noon on the solstice, a vertical rod will cast almost no shadow. Eratosthenes realized that if the Earth was a perfect sphere, he could calculate its radius by measuring the length of a shadow cast by a rod due north of the city of Sienne, then use some basic trigonometry to find the radius. He did just that and found the radius of the Earth to within 16%. The catch is that the measurement had to be done on the same day, the same time as the measurement in CN. So he had to wait for the summer solstice to come around. Here's where you guys come in. Originally, I was going to do the measurement myself in tandem with a partner about a thousand kilometers to the south of me. Unfortunately, all my contacts in the Stanford area were either traveling or on vacation. Next, I tried Craigslist. That was a disaster. I got some very unsettling emails. In the end, it was Thunderfoot who suggested crowdsourcing this project and making it a global experiment. So, this Saturday, June 22nd at noon, I'm going to be measuring the length of a shadow of a vertical meter stick, and I'm hoping as many of you as possible will join me. Then, send me the following information. The time you took the measurement, so as close to 12 noon on Saturday as possible. Your location, so city, state, province. The length of the rod you used, the length of the shadow it cast, and for fun, a photo of you guys doing the experiment. I'll try and edit it into the final video project. Hopefully we'll do better than Eratosthenes 16%. You might be wondering why I'm so enthusiastic about this project. Well, think about it. Remember how excited physicists got when the Higgs boson was finally discovered? That prediction had only been around for about half a century. Remember how excited mathematicians got when Fermat's last theorem was finally proven? That conjecture was around for a measly third of a millennia. Eratosthenes' prediction and measurement had to wait over 1,500 years to be confirmed by outside experimentation. That is a remarkable prediction. That's what I call epic science. I'm hoping that as many of you as possible are able to participate this Saturday and take the 20 minutes needed to do the experiment. I mean, if planking and owling were things, then surely physicsing could be. 
even if you can't participate, it would be a real help if you just reblog this, posted it on Facebook. The more people who see the video, the more people who are likely to participate, and the better an answer we can get for the radius of the Earth. So I'll turn you over to Thunderfoot now, who'll give you a quick crash course in how to measure the length of a shadow of a rod. And remember, when in doubt, use science. So, the minimal requirements are your latitude and the ratio of the height of your vertical object and how long the shadow is when it gets to be its shortest. But it would be really cool if you could get video like this, because then we can stitch it together from all of these places all over the Earth. Now, this measurement will actually change somewhat over the course of the year. So we're actually going to do this on the summer solstice. And this is primarily because this is when the rate of the change of the length of those shadows from day to day is actually at its smallest. So you can actually do this measurement over a period of plus or minus a couple of days and still get data that's fit for the purpose of determining the size of the Earth.